What we're looking at here is a limited access watering area into a pond. This is a ramp of rock that goes down into the pond and under the water and it keeps the cattle from getting in and standing in the pond and accessing the whole pond where they will tromp the banks down and uh, really very hard on the ponds and can be hard on the health of the livestock. This allows them to come in, walk down to the water, get a drink while they're on firm footing, not mud, and then they can walk back out and uh, never have to deal with being in the pond for long periods of time. So this ramp is um, goes all the way down at a fairly shallow grade, six to one or less, and then it goes under the water to the end of the fence. This pond is then fenced off with a power fence to keep the cattle out, and this exclusion area is also a power fence to keep the cattle only in a certain part of the pond. As the water level in the pond goes down, the water will recede on this ramp, but they still have access to the water and plenty of water. The gravel is about, <clears throat> the rock is about a foot deep. I think this is a little deeper than that, but uh, at least a foot deep. <clears throat> and it's laying, it's laying on landscape fabric. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, eight inch non-woven landscape fabric. The first six inches of rock is about four inch rock. And the upper level is about two inch rock. Now, not only does the rock keep things dry, but cattle don't really like to stand on the rock, so they'll come in and get a drink and then leave and let the other cattle water and not just stand down in there and loaf like they would if it was mud. So <clears throat> rock has that effect. Same deal as if you're putting rock around your, uh, your water tanks. They don't like to stand on it. The, the one wire that you see down at the limited uh, access area that's in the water that's not hooked up to the electric fence, otherwise it would ground it out. That's just there as an extra precaution. But these wires are always hot around the fence and around the access area, and, and they don't bother them, of course, because they're trained to the hot wire. These uh, watering areas, these limited access watering areas, are available for cost share under the EQIP program through NRCS, and they will cost share on the fencing, <coughs> and the construction of the ramp and the rock and everything like that. They do have specifications for building these. They're quite flexible because you might want to build one in a creek or a river or a lake or a pond, or a small pond like this. And so there's a lot of flexibility in the design, but several design facets are critical. And uh, the slope, the depth of the rock, et cetera, um, have to meet their design specs, which as far as I know, are, are pretty flexible and uh, really work well. One thing that's important for a limited access water is to protect it from having water from the surrounding watershed flow down your surface of your rock and whatnot and cause erosion or gullies or anything like that. So you can see this berm that runs around the top <coughs> of the area that we're using for the water. And this water then is diverted. Any water coming down this hill is diverted out around our watering area to help keep it dry. That water still goes in the pond and is usable, but it, it keeps it from running directly down our ramp. Also, the cattle will tend to make trails over time to this watering area and they can start a ditch right down through here into the watering area if you don't have this berm. It doesn't have to be a big berm. This one's only about a foot high, but it's a critical part of the operation. What we're looking at here is a limited access watering ramp in the early stages of development. This pond has been drawn down, the water level has been drawn down. Here's the future full level right here. The water level will come up to here when it's full and then the ramp will extend down below water level about 30 to 36 inches. Then of course this will have rock a foot deep going all the way up the ramp and it will be fenced so that the stock can't get any into the whole pond and then the fence will go all the way around the pond to protect the pond from livestock. Um, one thing that's going on here that's a little bit different this is an old pond dating way back to the 1930s or 40s this had a lot of livestock in it and it was only about two feet, three feet deep. And so we brought in a track hoe and we dug the whole pond out. Now it's about 20 feet deep, but we haven't finished 
with all our spoil dirt, we haven't finished shaping it up yet, so it's just a weedy mess right now. But once we get the ramp in and get the rock in, then with a, a dozer, we'll finish up the pond and then refence the whole thing. One of the nice things about <coughs> limited access waters is how simple they are. Once they're installed, <coughs> While your stock's here watering, you don't have to worry about a line breaking or a float breaking or a tank breaking or electricity going out on a pump or anything like that. It's just, it's just they're watering at a pond, but they just can't get in and, and uh, mud up the whole pond. Because the rock is here and they don't like to stand on the rock a lot, they tend to come in and drink and then they just leave. Another nice advantage of it is once you fence the pond off, it becomes a little wildlife refuge for all sorts of birds and amphibians and reptiles and mammals and whatever because uh, you have the fence around it to protect it. Uh, a lot of different beneficial plants can grow there uh, and, and it becomes a nice little refuge on your farm.